Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at the next informal guide which is this one. The people have spoken and they have chosen a labs raid. So I've tried to pick one that's kind of interesting and it has some things I did well, some things that I did not do so well. So we'll take a look at that as it goes along. As you can see, I'm using an unsuppressed RD. I didn't see the point in putting on a proper stock because honestly, the actual stocks for the AKs, like the wooden ones, plus the butt pad, that recoil wise, they're very similar to the meta stocks. And so I get asked this question a lot, but genuinely, if you're unsuppressed with the RD, you don't really need one of the Zhukovs or anything like that. It doesn't make that much difference. This is the rest of the loadout. We've got a killer armor that I picked up off somebody else earlier on and a relatively basic setup, honestly. It's my usual med setup of the cat tourniquets and the car kit, which maybe I'll do a video about that another time because I get asked about that 24 seven. A class four helmet, set of contacts and a regular bag. In my secure container, we've actually got BP and PS as well as the other things, simply because I didn't have enough BP to actually stack all of these mags up with BP. And so I think we've got a 15-15 split between the two. Right, so where we've started, let's go and grab the map. So this is a set of stairs here that curls back on itself and through this door is parking and to the left is another corridor that kind of goes back around over towards sort of red room and that kind of area. So you can see it on this map here. And the stairs where I guess I would have come from, I've spawned in on these stairs looking this way, is down into the, the sewers somewhere around the boiler area. And this parking staircase links up to here. So this door ahead of us, this is the one that goes into the actual parking room itself to our left around there. And this is the one that goes around snakes through into that kind of lobby reception area. The red room is over here and the office opposite it is there. And the cat room is kind of over here. So just sort of get our bearings as to exactly where we are when we first start loading into the raid. So let's get going. We'll stick the sound up a bit and we'll see how the raid progresses at the beginning. Let's give it a try. Ah, this is where the dudes were. So this is usually the way that I like to go, through parking and up these stairs. This, I was doing the search for the MCC and the GPSA, so that one of the first spawns is up in the parking office. So that's kind of where I'm headed to begin with. Now out here, there's another spawn that can be all the way down this corridor. I'm actually gonna pull the map up again. So we've ended up, uh, cause I went up that staircase here, we went into parking and up the staircase there. We now ended up on the second level. So we're over here, we ran up there. The item that I want is in this room, but there is another spawn down here. And I spawn here all the time. This is all the way along the big long corridor past red and violet, and then up into this little section here. But I wanna make sure that when I go into this room, I'm not just gonna be pinged at by somebody who's kind of walked over the bridge and gone in the cafe or sort of around, around this area. That's kind of the idea here. We don't see anybody. Just that, okay. So we decide to move on with our life. And this is where the tech spawns are. Yeah. GPX. Iridium. When you're searching for good items, you should have in your mind what you're going to take out of your secure container. For me, it's either a stack of cheaper rounds or it's going to be the CMS or Ali Splint. So you want to think about what's most valuable. These are about 25k. These are about 13k. So it kind of depends about what you want to get out. Probably 15k actually. So per slot, the CMS is less valuable, but this is only a one slot. So you lose less money overall kind of thing. I normally move the CMS kit out, um, especially if they're damaged or whatever, because and I can craft these out of car kits as well. So usually I move out the CMS kit, but it's a good idea to have in your mind what priority you have in your secure container so that you can just quickly whip stuff out and pop things in when you find stuff that is valuable. Back to this corridor, I'm still concerned over there because people do often spawn. And the next place that I want to go, I should probably have gone into this office, but I'm trying to get over to Cat. Oh. <laughs> now that was really quite unfortunate because literally as I looked sideways, the guy popped out from over there. I knew somebody would be over there. The guy popped out and shot at me. Now we didn't actually take enough damage to the head to kill us, but we did get shot in the head. And the rate of fire from the weapon, it sounds very much like an MP7. Actually, let's, uh, let's just go back so you can just hear it again. So as I run this way, it's, this is so unfortunate, right? Like I'm looking, 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 trying to get across to this angle as quickly as possible. And as I look down, the guy pops out and starts shooting. And it, it's definitely an MP7 from the sound of it. Whoa. So we're in a bit of a tricky spot now. Ah, oh, no, I have a hotkey to an injector. 
There's a mistake, not having an injector hotkeyed. Now we can see on our health that we actually have three head HP. Now this means that he probably, if we go to the ammo, this means that he's probably using subsonic because FMJ does a little bit less damage than that. And this means that it would only have had one, I guess, damage lost over the distance traveled. And normally at the beginning is where the damage loss is the highest because the rounds are going the fastest. So they slow down the quickest at the beginning. So I think it's unlikely that it's FMJ. I think it's probably more likely that it's subsonic. So this thing did actually penetrate our helmet and has left us on a small amount of HP. This is referencing the other video I did the other day about helmets and about how none of these rounds can actually kill somebody straight away if they hit the helmet using against a class four, which is pretty nuts. Like none of these APSX, FMJ, Subsonic, none of them do enough damage to one shot somebody through a class four helmet, which is pretty insane. But anyway, so we're in this in this funny little spot now, I guess on, on the map, we're now in the conference room, which is called cat room because it's got the two cat statues. We're in this corner here. Now, normally when you end up in an engagement like this and there's a little bit of a lull, people grenade straight away. Now we're actually in an okay spot. It's one of the reasons why I stayed here. I did genuinely stay here too long, but it's one of the reasons why I didn't mind staying at the beginning, because if I'm going to get naded, it's actually very hard for the guy to get a nade into this room. So we can just kind of heal up and figure out, see if we can hear him, that kind of thing. There's the nade. You see the way that the window curves around, it's very difficult for them to actually slot a nade in. It's more just to keep me pinned and stop me from peeking out, I guess. Can't believe the helmet saved me there. Now this is this is kind of unorthodox. I decided to heal my arm here. Now normally you'd heal your thorax. And the thought process behind this is you'll be able to see here the health ticking up, right? And it's like one every second. And so my thought process was the thorax has only got six HP that hasn't been healed so far. And if I heal it completely on the arm, then it's going to heal my thorax up in about five seconds just using the probitol. So the guy voice lines over this way, and we can hear it that it, it, he is actually that way just based on the binaural audio. You're going down us all this shit. So we know that he's still over here. So that's why I'm kind of comfortable still to stay because I know that he can't really do anything about me. You can shoot through these glass windows with BP and with other rounds. So we could potentially have a fight over here. Ah. No, no, no. So I start getting shot at from where I was before. I don't exactly know who that was and where, where it was. But I think, I don't think he could have got there quick enough to shoot it, the original guy. So it must have been somebody else who heard the firefight and came over. That's my thoughts anyway. Either which way. So we just run. Right, now this area is some more high value loot spots. This is kind of the server's area. And we've ended up in weapon testing. So where we went <clears throat> is from the conference room. We ran along this here, through the middle section, and down the stairs, go down to this next bit, down into the main working area. So the dome is over here. We ran down this set of stairs into, this is the little server bit, and then this is weapon testing here. And then again, to get our bearings, the little robot arms are over there. The colored keycard rooms are down here with servers down there, and the warehouse is through this section. So we're basically just, just here, just about to enter into weapon testing room. And there are more spawns here, MCC and GPSAs. Angle. That's why we're going. Now, I don't, whether you should close the door here or not, I'm, I'm not really sure. I didn't want somebody to just push in while I was doing something else. And so I did decide to close it. I'm still not 100% sure whether this is a good idea or not, because this limits my maneuverability, but we do hear somebody, so we kind of just have to go with it. I tried to slow walk so that he doesn't know that I'm in here. But I hear the guy jumping across, which means even though I didn't see him, he may have seen something of me. So I figure, well, there's not really much point in trying to be silent anymore. And especially not after I on ADS because he'll, he knows I'm in here now. So I didn't even see him there. And I tried to heal up my thorax quickly. And we see the guy jump past. Let's just take that little bit there. 
Here he is. Right, so he jumps past. And that means that he's going to be free looking inside and he knows exactly where I am, which means I need to move from here because he's going to shoot through the wall and try to kill me. We hear the reload. I was trying to escape, but we hear the reload, so I decided to go for push instead. Which just about works out. Okay. Ah, oh, there's another one! And it sounds like our MP7 guy. Now, we're not sure exactly where he is. He's probably up on the balcony. I didn't hear anything. I was trying to get some sound cues or something. But I just decided to leave. <laughs> we're on the run. We're on the run. See, now that's really weird. You see the bullet flash through the floor. And this is MP7 guy, or maybe it's a different MP7 guy. It's an MP7 that's firing up here somewhere. Now, where we've gone is we have gone from weapon testing. Then we've gone down here. Our guy was on this railing above. It doesn't show it that nicely on this map. But if you look here, he was probably up on this railing somewhere. There's the staircase there. Weapon testing is just underneath. But I think he was probably around here somewhere. It's kind of hard to know. We went through here and then past the lecture theatre, but we did a complete sort of right turn around here and go up this set of wooden stairs. That's kind of what we're aiming towards anyway. So we know that somebody, if we then shoot up to where this actually is, that is the top of the stairs here. So somebody's very likely to be there. We're basically like here or something. And the set of wooden stairs is there. He's here. And it looks like he's shooting this way. So it could in theory be a different guy shooting at this person who was shooting at us before, like two MP7s. It's very hard to know exactly what happened. So I decided to go and engage. <laughs> is that super sus? So we kill him and I think... I misread it here because I figured I thought it would be I thought it was super super suspicious that this guy was firing. Now, I don't know whether there was somebody else here or whether he mistook me as being on his floor and he tried to pre-fire me as he heard me running because as I was running through it maybe could have sounded like I was running up the staircase and then up through here, I'm not really sure. But you can see from when I actually end up fighting him, I don't think it's sus at all. I think I just misread it in the moment because when I come up the stairs, he's genuinely not pointing at me whatsoever right like he's he's not even thinking that i'm here and this is one very interesting takeaway is that this staircase is absolutely notorious if you stand at the top of this you just won't hear somebody coming up the actual stairs and this is the classic tarkov stairs problem but he didn't hear me at all he didn't know that i was coming and by the time that i've run up and i pulled my gun up he's only just able to respond and this guy actually it turned out was a really high level player but even though his reaction speeds are probably better than mine and he's much better at the game than me the, I guess the advantage that I have of him not being able to hear me and then the desync of me coming on his screen means that I actually managed to kill him before he kills me. I mean, this guy's clearly, he's, he's, I'm sure he's going to be a better player than me. Is that super sus? As I said, I, I don't think it is. I think I just misread it at the time. It just looked weird because he fired before I even went up the stairs. Nice. <laughs> I've not got enough meds here. And this is an interesting one about the car kit because I have kind of run out of meds because I ended up in quite a few fights. Because the, the reason why I normally go with this, I was slightly flustered. And the reason why I normally am not bothered about the car kit is because when you survive, you can then use the meds from the guy that you kill. Yeah. So yeah, MP7 and AFAC. And that's what I should have that's what I should have used really. I should have used the AFAC to begin with. So we do a bunch this of healing. Seems weird, right? I don't think there's much interesting here. There's just we do a bunch of healing and heal ourselves up. Now I should probably move as well, right? This is a big mistake because we've literally just killed the guy with no audio up these stairs. I should not oh, be here. Hello. I should not be here. The guy what actually came into then? chat. The guy actually came into chat and just said there was no audio. So let's skip it forwards a bit to the next the next part when we actually move. Because I just basically sit in here. But yeah, I should have gone around the corner. Like from this part of where we are, up this staircase, you can go down into the, like this S-bend. 
which is probably not too bad. So it's like one way, or you could come across maybe into the kitchen area or something. Somewhere that's better to defend than this because, yeah, we literally just killed the guy in there. So we could have been killed ourselves in exactly the same way, which would have been, that would have been unfortunate and, and a bit sad. All right, let's see. So you take the last thing of this guy and then we decide that we're going to think about leaving. Do I need more bullets in my things? I do. Oh, I'm going to pack some mags first. Let's skip the mag packing. No one, no one needs to see about that. Back to mags. And we've got the MP7 as a secondary, just in case. Could I have this trash? Maybe loot the other people. And off we go. I don't know where the other guy... Oh, the other guy, though, there was, like, someone else near him, right? I want to go all the way back to where he was. It's quite a risky area. And we do just need to leave because of the armor situation. Again, it's a classic case of... Way. It's a classic case of just not having enough armor, and like when you've got no armor on, exactly. it just means the next it's fight, the next fight that you have, you're you're just so much more likely to die. I think the I can't remember what it was. Was it like nine or something? It was like nine out of sixty. Just it's effectively like a class two or three or something. It's just not going to save you from anything. So I'd rather just not wear it. Like a lot of people don't wear class five on labs; they just wear class four instead. But I feel that there's a lot of bullets that shred class four, like FMJ out of the MP7, the class 5 absorbs really, really nicely. And even BP, you can absorb, it's a 50-50 whether you absorb the first shot of BP or not. Whereas with class 4, it's a guaranteed pen. So I quite like class 5 for labs, even if you just go in something cheap like a, a, a Coranda or a Gagelle. I always go... I always go this way, down there. So we're trying to leave, and the way that I normally try to go is we're we've come up this way now up towards the bridge and we're looking we're actually looking from where we had that very first fight so from this angle you can see all the way down to here which is the office over parking and that's where we were right at the start like that door you can't really see it now let me just move it slightly yeah so there that's the edge of the door just around that corner that's this door here um, and you can see it all the way down from there and where i like to go from here normally is if you because that Unless you're going for the loot rooms, I don't think there's any reason to be in this square section like I was at the beginning, because if you're not going for the loot, then there's safer ways to go. And I normally like to go along here, down this little staircase. That will then take you down to this section here, just there. And then I like to do a sort of 180 round down into this staircase. Then that takes you into this room where you do 180 around here and you can get into sewers or you can just go up to the main elevator like that and i can't actually remember what i decided to do on this particular raid so let's see i think this one was also relatively early when i was playing labs so i was still getting a bit more comfortable with it let's see what i try i might the other the other alternative is to hop and skip across if you get down into the so where i went down this time is just like down the stairs and into here then you can skip right across to this door here, down that down that staircase, which then will take you down into the boiler room and the switch there, and then up to main elevator. That's another route that I normally like taking, but let's see. Looks like I'm probably going to do Can that. Can you guys see in here, by the way? Can you see in this room? Because this room's usually really um, really dark. Does it look okay on stream? Because I changed the gamma. Love your videos. Hey, thanks, buddy. So yeah, that was, it was just a really weird situation. I changed the brightness on stream so that you can actually see in dark areas, like like it looks on my monitor, because I upped my gamma because it's almost impossible to see on certain maps. Interchange pre-lighting rework is impossible to see. And to be honest, it's probably still too dark to see if you don't fiddle with it. Underground on reserve and some of the really dark rooms in labs as well, they can be really hard to see in unless you have your gamma changed. I've changed mine in NVIDIA control panel to 1.3. And one and it means you can actually see in some of those areas before then i was just avoiding those places because i just couldn't fight and people were just killing me and i couldn't actually even see them on my monitor so you know do with that what you will and what happened to that it, like it seemed really odd i couldn't i couldn't tell exactly what was happening between like why your shots were up there and then and then you shot down at me it was just like really odd it's a really odd thing. So back in this lobby, this is the place where I just pointed out. I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but I want to make sure that people who aren't as familiar with labs understand the map. So we've just run across this reception room here, and there's two doors. One of the doors feeds right back through to where we spawned. This is the snaking corridor, so it just set, sends you through to here. The other door is this one, and that's probably the one that we're going to take. That takes you down this staircase here. This is generally my preferred route. And then, as I said, it's going to take us out into this area down here. Uh, and we're going to be able to then press the button straight away. So it'll, it'll become I need to go back and look at it. It was all a bit hectic because I was running away from somebody too. 
go down here, down the corridor, and then just on the right, behind the pipes, you've got the elevator switch just in here for this elevator. And you can't get through there because it's blocked off. So you have to go through this little sort of mini server tech room, whatever it is. So you pull the switch here and then go straight there. It's pretty quick and it's then quite close to each other, the button and the elevator, which is one reason why I quite like it. Look like desync. It's also far from the colored I mean, key card I was rooms. I to hell. So it was kind of like... Uh... Now, if somebody's, just... if somebody's in the area, they can hear the notice on it. Sector R, I think, is what it says. And people can then rush you if they know that you're taking the elevator or whatever. Sometimes you have fights in this room here. I've definitely had fights previously in this kind of server room area. So you just have to be a little bit careful as well. Like I close the door here and just try to cover stuff and wait until the main elevator comes. I've never really been shot at from all the way down there. I think people are not in this area particularly, but you can run down the stairs if you know if, if you hear the call out and you're kind of in admin office or in parking or wherever and you're farming raiders and you hear somebody leaving you may be able to run down and catch them beforehand i've had that once or twice you just have to be a bit careful super flustered so i was like already running from one person but i wasn't sure exactly what happened <laughs> did we do it did we find it no but we ended up in an insane fight we had a we had a crazy fight um Actually, some of the best fights I've had on labs. Honestly, that's honestly fun. That's honestly a lot of fun. Yeah, and there you have it. I guess we'll get through to the stat screen. I'm just going to pause my wittering so you don't have to hear me twice. And um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty good fight. So we fought against the, the level 61 guy with the audio. And there were definitely some things that we could have done better. I think I should have moved when we were in the cat room right near the beginning. We probably should have moved earlier because it's it's really tough. Like the way to get yourself killed in Tarkov is to just sit in the same place. And we sat here for a long time. Like it was okay, I think, when the first nade came in and to do a bit of healing and get rid of, the, you know, get our thorax back full and that kind of stuff. But we got shot at from over here or something by somebody else because like... People on labs, they like to PvP. And so they they come across and they try to fight people when they hear that you know there's an engagement or something. And so we really should have moved earlier. I got myself a bit stuck. So yeah, we, we could have gone the way that I did earlier on. Other, otherwise, I don't think it was necessarily too bad. Yeah, I'm still I'm still learning labs. I'm not not an expert, but the map has been actually a lot of fun. I've um I've been playing quite a bit of labs just because I was trying to find the MCC and the GPSA. But overall, it's been a it's been a fun experience, honestly, and um, I haven't really had that many sus encounters either. But I do I do play EU Day, so I don't know whether that has anything to do with it. Either which way, I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope that it was interesting and, and cool. So I'm going to carry on doing some more of these. We'll see. Maybe I'll just do another raids one next week. I don't know. Any topics that you guys are interested in in particular, put down in the comments. I was originally thinking of alternating between raid versions and other tutorials, things like the ones we've done about the weapons. Um, I might do one about the our first aid kit or something. I might, maybe I'll do that as a regular video. I'm not sure. But anyway, anything that you want to see, put down in the topic, in the, in the conversations, in the comments, and I will read through as I always do. And I'll try to pick out if there's anything that was cool there. And, um, and we can kind of go from there. I guess the only other thing is that I will actually upload this raid so that you can see it in full. If you want to, I'll put it in the description. And uh, yeah, you can just see it in full on its own without my commentary if you want, because it's not. This was actually before I was uh, live on YouTube, so it's not as part of my vods. Because yeah, as you could you could probably see in the corner, I had like the old uh, the old ping thing because I, I didn't have very good internet. But anyway, I'll put the raid in the description so that you guys can see it. So anyway, have fun. I hope you enjoyed and have fun in your raids.